Leia. Yes. Trust in me. Trust in me. Just close your eyes and trust in me. Leia? Leia! Leia! Wake up! I'm Lamont, and I am interested in learning about different ways to build trust. And I'm Leia. Yeah, I trust you. Maybe. <laughs> and, and you're, you're tuning, tuning into, into the Lamont and Leia podcast. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, Leia. Last week, we had Dylan on our show, mm-hmm. and we were talking about platonic intimacy, and it really turned out that that may have not really been the problem, mm-hmm. right? Um, and we discovered that maybe trust and learning to trust, um, especially people that we're not comfortable with or strangers, mm-hmm. is the issue. And so we're like, we need to have a part two. And we did it. We didn't wait a few months. We're like, next week, part two, trust. (laughs) So, yeah. So, Leia, what is trust and how would you define it? I don't know, bro. I thought you were going to tell me. (laughs) Well, from from, from your your, perspective, from your Mm -hmm. history, from your experiences, like... What do you think you've learned trust to mean to you? Um, Trust to me is thinking or knowing that the person in question is not going to hurt you. Maybe. Yeah. (laughs) I've I've always heard that I'm too trusting of people. So, I don't know. So, yeah. To trust means to feel safe with, Mm -hmm. right? Um, So we expect them not to hurt us physically. We expect them not to hurt us emotionally um, or even spiritually. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So trust. How would I define trust? I feel like like I've been told that too late. I feel like I have been told I trust easily. Like, I mm-hmm. give people, like, the benefit of the doubt yeah. um, until they mess up. And maybe that's not always the best way to approach things, but I'd rather approach it that way versus, like, having guards up, like, who are you? Don't talk to me. Like, ah. Uh. Yeah. You know? Um, so for me, I guess I would define trust as the ability to share a little bit of comfort maybe Mm -hmm. or um feel safe to to be yourself yeah i guess be myself Mm -hmm. um i guess when i trust someone i guess yeah when i trust someone i don't feel like i need to front for the most part so if you are needing to front, that's a good time to reflect. Be like, why am I feeling like mm-hmm. not myself? Why do I feel like I have to go this extra mile? What's what's happening in the environment? Mm-hmm. For me, it's more of like not pretending that I'm like someone else. It's more like pretending that I have a confidence that I might not have. Like, I guess Patrick is not a great example because I'm so comfortable around him. <laughs> Right, right, um, right. I guess it would be some of our other friends. Like, I like to play this role that I'm a very confident, outspoken person. And, like, maybe with the people I really trust and feel comfortable with, like you, like Patrick, like my siblings, that's 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 true. But with other people, I feel like I have to act like that. Like, fake it till you make it, you know? <laughs> you know, um, I grew up watching a lot of Xena Warrior Princess. Uh, yes. And um, there was this one scene where, like, this guy had to beat Xena. He had to be the best. Mm-hmm. And, like, he's fighting her and stuff. 
And basically, at the end of the episode, he learns the lesson that he may not need to put up this front of being the best and that he's going to pretend to be good until he actually is good. Hmm. I always thought that was an interesting episode. Um, but that's kind of like what I was like reminding me of what you were saying right now. Like, mm-hmm. like fake it till you make it. Like, <laughs> I may not be feeling 100% confident right now, but I'm going to pretend that I am and eventually I'm going to feel that way. Yeah. And I think that's not a bad skill to have because that's who you are. Like, you mm-hmm. are a confident, outspoken person, but in the moment you may not feel like it. So you're kind of like calling on powers that you already have, but may not have like feel emotionally connected to until you do. That's kind of how I'm like picturing that. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, cool. So, So between you and I, we have decided that trust is something that we feel comfortable with, something that um, we feel someone or people that we feel safe with, Mm -hmm. um, that are emotionally safe, are physically safe, that are spiritually safe, and they're not out to hurt us. Yeah. Okay. So what are some of the things that get in the way of trust? Meaning, like in get in the way of you trusting someone or get in yeah. the way or of like developing that trust or developing building that trust. trust yeah, yeah. um definitely someone who doesn't speak to like speak respectfully to you that makes me feel like oh i don't know maybe they're not as safe as i think they are <laughs> yeah so that lack of care like okay so respect is the definition of respect is to be considerate of other people's thoughts feelings emotions Mm -hmm. right that's the definition of respect so if you're not being considerate and you're being inconsiderate you're not showing that your care you are not showing that interest right Mm -hmm. i think one of the biggest like pet peeves of mine is nonchalantness and um just just to be like a little um forthcoming i've been struggling with a coworker at work um and i want to say that's one of the biggest turnoffs like one of the things that puts me in a bad mood is like say like we're like in a meeting and we're teaming and we're all enjoying each other's time mm-hmm. and we're being like nice and she comes in with this nonchalant attitude I'm like, what is her problem? Like, why can't you get on board? Why can't you team with us? And like, those are, again, I had to check myself before I wreck myself. That's Leia. <laughs> and I had to realize, like, first of all, she doesn't have to be on board. Like, not everyone needs to be happy all the time. Yeah. And she's definitely not happy <laughs> all the time. Um, but second, also, like, I think it's okay for her not to have an interest and I have to be okay with her not having that interest. Mm. But that makes me feel like I can't trust her and I don't feel safe around her. And I think I've ever said that to coworkers before mm. when certain incidents come down. Like, I don't trust her. I don't feel safe. She doesn't make me feel safe. Yeah. I don't feel like I can team with her. Yeah. Um, related, kind of, rela- well, to, like, the coworker thing something that like really breaks my trust with people is when i hear them talking about other people Mm, in like not a like i feel like there's a difference between talking bad about someone and bringing up concerns with other people right like a coworker if they're not doing their job it's different if you're just like oh my god they're so lazy versus hey i'm concerned about so and so because they're not really showing up what are we going to do about this like, when I hear someone talking bad about someone, I'm like, what are you saying about me? Hmm? Right. What are you saying about me? I don't know right. if I trust you. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I've definitely had conversations where I was like, I don't like this or mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. So I'm, I'm saying the experience that I have, and it's okay for me to talk about that experience, but it's not okay for me to be like this person's lazy or Mm -hmm. this person's mean or stupid or whatever. It's not okay to put labels on them, but I can say like, I didn't like this experience. It really Mm -hmm. sucked. Yeah. You know, 
Um, and so that's that's the difference between like me talking shit on someone and me mm-hmm. just talking to someone I do trust about an issue or concern. That's mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, so those are, those are some things that get in the way of trust for me. So dismissive language or dismissive tones, right? Again, lack of interest. Mm-hmm. I think that goes back to showing lack of interest. Like, um, I'm trying to think. Let's just move on now. Like, no, like, first of all, like, how dare you? I wasn't done talking. (laughs) Like, I think it's okay to be like, I think it's honestly okay to be like, hey, um, I'm really tired of talking about this subject. I I really have nothing more input. I don't think we're getting anywhere. Can we table it for now and move on? Mm -hmm. That's different versus like, let's just move on. Like, we've talked about this enough. Let's just move on. Like, no, no. Like... That's not okay. That's rude, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to break the trust. Yeah. Like, you're not taking my feelings about something into consideration. Right. Good point. Good point. Yeah. So, like, it's definitely okay to stick up for yourself and tell people what you need. Mm-hmm. But it's not okay to, like, just, like, shut it down. Yeah. Yeah. Well. There might be certain situations where you need to, but. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> again, like. Be careful, like yeah. be careful, because even, even even if you need to, you could still probably break the trust that you're trying to build with someone, mm-hmm. right? So there's a way to, there's a way in which to shut it down, like mm-hmm. that was perfectly fine. Like, hey, you know what? It doesn't seem like we're getting anywhere. Does everyone agree? Can we just table it for now and come back to it another time? Mm-hmm. Or like, it seems like we all have said what we needed to say. We're not agreeing. Can we just drop it? Like, is that is that okay with everyone? Or does anyone have something they still need to say? You know? Mm-hmm. Um, that's going to be like, okay, like, well, even if they're not agreeing with me, I can still trust them to be honest and considerate and polite and not dismiss me or my thoughts or my feelings. <gasps> Ooh. I think I just, <laughs> I think I just got a breakthrough. I think I just got a breakthrough. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so I can now share that insight with my therapist. <laughs> All right, so let's let's keep going. Let's keep going. Um, okay, so when someone doesn't say what they mean, right? Mm-hmm. Like they're being evasive or opaque, and that creates that uneasiness, and I, and I quickly spiral down uh, down the road of mistrust, mm-hmm. right? Um, so. Yeah, those are things that break trust for me. Like, if they're being, like, fishy or or whatever. Oh, another one. When someone doesn't come through when they say they're going to, that can be, like, for anything. Work, interpersonal, a relationship. Like, something as simple as, like, oh, yeah, I will return this item to you next week. I ain't never seen it again. <laughs> Well, that definitely breaks down trust. Now, I do believe the exception to that for me, just for me, is if you communicate, like, something's happening. Yeah. Like, that makes sense. Like, Like, yeah, I couldn't. (laughs) No, go ahead. Go ahead, Leah. Yeah, like, I couldn't do this thing you asked me to because something very important came up or, like, I ran out of time. Yeah, I might be annoyed, but, like, I get it. You're telling me that that's fine. It's when I, like, come back expecting this and it's not done. You're like, uh, I just didn't do it. (laughs) Yeah, and then then you start being evasive. (laughs) Like, what is going on here? Exactly. Um, Anything else you think gets in the way? No, um, I'm I'm pretty sure some other things get in the way. Yeah. Hey, listeners, viewers, tell us some of the things that get in the way or things that break down trust for you. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Too. Yeah. So now that we've kind of talked about the things that get in the way of building trust, what can we do to start building trust? Um... I think if you're honest about, like, what your expectations for someone is, um, but that takes, like, 
maturity, like communicational maturity. Don't know if there's an actual word for that. But um, yeah, I think that's more of like a mature thing to kind of realize, like especially actually it works in all sorts of relationships, like interpersonal, romantic work, especially work when you're when you're clear about like needing something or expecting something from someone i feel like that can build trust and rapport and stuff yeah so um sometimes i struggle about speaking up right mm -hmm. um yes it, it may not seem like lamont struggles about speaking <laughs> up, but there's sometimes an internal battle where it's like you should speak up i'm like no i don't want to it's gonna be uncomfortable <laughs> and so then it's like be brave <laughs> like you you need to communicate this otherwise they're not going to know and you can't hold them accountable and so mm -hmm. this is literally the conversation that i'm having in my head and i'm mm -hmm. like so i have to dig deep sometimes and i'm like i'm not sure if i'm gonna say this correctly <laughs> but, like, but like please know like this is what i'm thinking this is what i'm feeling what are your thoughts you know mm -hmm. um Another way to build trust, I think, is like building rapport with someone. Like mm -hmm. if you're trying to have a friendship or even turn a friendship into a romantic relationship, building rapport by finding things you have in common. Yes. Mm -hmm. So relating, finding common ground. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then this is very helpful in language. So developing a common language, right? Mm. Um, if you notice, like if you've watched several of our podcasts, I'm always having to find something like, what does this mean to you? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. If you attend like one of my youth groups that I like that, like I'm always having like, what does this mean? What does this mean? Like I have them break it down for themselves. So they have their own definition. Mm -hmm. and then, I might tie in a, then I might tie in a textbook definition. So we have a working definition. Mm -hmm. So it's everything that you said and this so now that we have that on mind let's let's have a deeper conversation right mm -hmm. so i'm always helping or i'm always my goal is to always help people like find common ground mm -hmm. um and also discover what they discover what they know right because we know so much but sometimes we don't realize we know so much true yeah um i think so, something... build, so that's part of building rapport yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I think something I struggle with in building trust is reciprocated, like re reciprocated feelings and stuff in a relationship. Like sometimes it's me, sometimes it's the other person. But like if you are doing all these like trust building things with someone and they're not reciprocating or if someone is trying to develop a relationship with you and you're not reciprocating, mm. I don't think there can be trust like maybe on one end but it's very one-sided right so and i feel like that's very much what's happening at my job is mm -hmm. it is one-sided and yeah. i feel like they aren't putting in the effort mm -hmm. um so i i like one example comes to mind mm -hmm. um it was the weekend it really wasn't work related but they are very into this one subject. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, like I should share this with them because that's what they're interested in. And hopefully, like, like it was like, the first thought was like, they're interested in this. And so I thought of them and I thought of sharing it with them just because they're interested. Mm -hmm. But then like the thought was like, oh, and because we've been struggling, maybe this could help in the relationship. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they were rude per se, mm -hmm. um, but when she messaged back, she was like, oh yeah, like I know about this, this guy, like it, it was a, it's, yeah. a, it's an animal mm -hmm. um, and he's really cool. And I was like, oh, well, you know, that's fair. Like, and so I took a moment, I was like, oh, that didn't go the way I wanted it. But mm -hmm. I was thinking, what if she would have messaged me something about Beyonce? And I'm like, okay, well that, that's. I, I, I'm a Beyonce, like, whiz. Like, I know so many things. Like, you can't really catch me off guard, usually. So, like, I was like, okay, samesies. So I was yeah. like, okay, like, I think, I like, my heart was in the right place. But then just kind of, like, mm -hmm. 
and again, that was me giving her the benefit of the doubt, like her not trying to be rude. Um, I want to say there's a more recent sam sample where I was like taken back, like, oh my gosh, like that was uncalled for, or she just missed an opportunity, but I can't think of it right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are some other ways that you have to build trust one month gotta educate me here so curiosity <laughs> asking questions and remember your tone matters what you say matters people are gonna take that in especially if they're feeling people some people don't care right <laughs> like we have different type of people that process differently but if I'm trying, if you're trying to relate with to someone and you're trying to show respect, and remember, respect is consideration of others. Mm -hmm. Your tone really matters, and I'm mm -hmm. definitely a tone sensitive person. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna pick up on like, whoa, like hold up, what was that? Like yeah. who are you coming at like that? Like what's mm -hmm. going on? You're gonna put that defense. You're gonna put that wall up, right? Yeah. Um, versus if you're thoughtful in your language mm -hmm. and not dismissing my feelings um and you're including like you're giving me opportunities for me to include my feelings and my thoughts mm -hmm. so. um so here's an interesting question do you think a relationship whether in a personal romantic or work can survive without trust no, because a part of trust is being honest, right? Mm -hmm. So if I don't feel safe, how can I be honest with you? Mm. If I don't feel comfortable, I'm probably going to hide things and not mm -hmm. show up. Yeah. But so we're not going to have a pretty solid relationship. Yeah. Well, like, here's the thing. You say, well, if I don't trust you, I'm going to hide things. Do you think that means that even, like, your deepest secrets that you don't want to share with people, is that not trusting that person? So, so Like, I think that more so is in, like, a friendship or a romantic relationship, right. you know? Right, right. So I guess it depends on um, what you're trying to develop and who mm -hmm. you're trying to develop it with. Because at work... There's obviously some things you should not talk yeah, about. Yeah, of course. Right? Um, but let's say, like, the little things. Like, you're asked to work on a project. I might try to do it all myself because I don't trust that you'll have my back, mm -hmm. you know, um, when it comes down to this project. Um, and so there's dishonesty there. There's, I mean, like, there's, there's bound to be conflict if you're doing it all yourself and it was given to you both and, like, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it makes it hard to work with that person. So um, hopefully people can be mature and rise above and call on other skills. But at the end of the day, like, did you really enjoy working with that person? Mm -hmm. Or where you're just, like, on edge, like... If I do this, then this is going to happen. If I do this, it's going to happen. Yeah. You know? I think in, like, a friendship or a romantic relationship, I'm just wondering at what level does trust, like, not play a role? For example, there are things about myself that I know that I don't share with people because either it makes me uncomfortable or it's stuff that... I regret or like I don't like about myself whether they're an old thing a new thing yada yada I wouldn't say personally that means I don't trust like say you mm -hmm. it's just like I don't want to share it yeah because it's like a internal thing so does that mean I don't trust you because I trust you right. <laughs> like... <laughs> no, I, I know what you mean I know what you mean yeah um... So I don't think that's distrust. Now, if it involved me some kind of way, I think yeah. it is your duty to tell me and inform me. Yeah. But if it doesn't really involve me, that's not, you don't necessarily need to share that with me. Mm -hmm. um, however, if it's something that's like tearing you down on the mm -hmm. inside, 
and you needed help, I hope you would reach out and be like, yeah. hey, hey, this is what I've been experiencing. Yeah. And we well, can be it doesn't like, okay. have anything to do with you, so don't worry. <laughs> no, 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 no. And so, and so, like, then I can be like, oh, let me, let's try to get you some help. If, yeah. Like, because, like, again, like, those negative voices on mm -hmm. the inside that tell us that we are horrible people, we're undeserving, we're unworthy, um, we have to rewrite those, right? Yeah. And some days we're really, really good, and then some days we're not. Yeah. And if we're having more bad days than not, I, I, it's very important that we do reach out to yeah. people that can help us get help. Yeah, that's true. I just also think that it's okay to have like a deepest darkest secret you know? yeah like yeah. <laughs> yeah if it's if, it, if it's something that you're managing well mm -hmm. um that doesn't involve that person or other people yeah then that's yours to keep unless mm -hmm. you decide to share it or when you decide to share it um so Brene brown has this amazing point where she's like only share or only be vulnerable with the people that matter, right? That people that deserve to hear your stories. Mm -hmm. And the people that deserve to hear our stories are the people that show up for us yeah. all the time, that come with no judgment, that come with love and support. Those are the people that deserve to hear our stories. Mm -hmm. um, and I forgot that. <laughs> I forgot that one time. So I had, um, I had been intimate with this one person without being fully like, intimate so like there was like this other like incredibly intimate moment mm -hmm. um where there was like there was touching and closeness and and sharing and i felt so like full of like clo like just like belonging with this mm -hmm. one individual and so like i just started sharing like i was just like on this high of just like yeah. sharing and then they were like, whoa, 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 whoa. And like, they're they're kind of like, they were also a person of like, social work, psychology study. Mm -hmm. So they were like, you you pulled too much out of the emotional bank right now. Mm -hmm. you, you did a deficit. And this is kind of now like, yeah. I need to like, distance myself. And I was so crushed because I felt so close. And I was like, oh, I was like, I forgot that rule. Like, yeah we literally had like just met and yeah. decided to engage in this like close experience but they hadn't really earned mm -hmm. you know that goes back to like reciprocating <laughs> yes yes i've had i've had a few friendships like that where i've like overshared and then they've ghosted me and i'm like oops <laughs> that was not the time <laughs> um so We've talked about like building trust, but what if someone breaks your trust? Can it be rebuilt? It can in time. Yeah. And I think it depends on the person. Yeah. Right? So what does this person mean to you? Mm -hmm. Is this something you're still willing to go through with this person? Mm-hmm. Or is it time to end that relationship and move on? Or redefine that relationship? I also think it takes a certain type of person. Because uh, I've kind of noticed there are a few different types of people. One being someone who forgive and forget. Mm -hmm. There's also the type of people who forgive but never forget. Mm -hmm. And then there's the people who neither forgive nor forget. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm more along the school of forgive, definitely forgive, but never forget. <laughs> because, like, if you forget, <laughs> it could rear up again and get you. <laughs> yeah. Um. I just, I just wonder. Like, I'm trying to think of a relationship that went sour and what happened with that. Um. Yes. Okay, I have one. So. In college, I had a group of friends, um, and at this time, I was, like, trying, I was, like, reaching out to make friends everywhere, and I would invite these friends to everything, and so I had invited this one guy uh, to this, with this group of friends out, and they did not like him. 
<laughs> and this was not a guy that I was trying to like be romantic with. Mm-hmm. It was just someone that I wanted to befriend for whatever reason. Um, and I guess I had done that a few times and they told me like, hey, we don't really want you bringing people around anymore because you're not bringing people that we want to hang out with. Whoa. And that kind of like, well, that hurt numero right. uno. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what really hurt is that they actually stopped talking to me after that. Mm. And I guess I, I hadn't realized I had done this so many times. Granted, I was pretty young, too. I think I was only, like, 18 or 19. So okay. still learning, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> trying to yeah. figure out what's acceptable and not. Um, but they all stopped talking to me after that. And they pretty much ghosted me. And that really hurt more yeah. than being told I had messed up. Um, forward a little bit. I think a while passed, like, I think maybe even a few years passed. And I ran into one of them at an event and he just goes, Hey, Leia. And I'm like, "Mm -mm. goodbye. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) And he's like, really? You're still mad? I'm like, yes. Goodbye. I have not talked to him since. And I see him around every once in a while, and I just turn the other way. <laughs> I treat him worse than I treat a lot of my ex-boyfriends. <laughs> oh, wow. I think I was just so hurt mm-hmm. by the fact that they just all ghosted me, and it was his fault. I don't want to say fault, but he's the reason why everyone else ghosted me in the friend group. Because he decided, well, we don't like the way... I don't like the way Leia did that, you know? Right. right. Um, so while I'm usually a forgive and forget kind of person, this guy has like killed his trust with me. I don't trust him. I am sometimes worried about some of the stuff he may say about me because we still are in like the same scene together. And so we pass by each other every once in a while. But, um, in that instance, I can neither forgive nor forget for some reason. And I don't think there's a way for him to ever rebuild trust with me. (laughs) Right. Um, I think for yourself, like, if you can find a way to forgive him, I would. Just Mm -hmm. for yourself. I'm not saying, like, let him back in. Because, like, that's not part of forgiving, right? You don't necessarily have to let someone back in to forgive them. But um, just so you're not holding on to, Mm -hmm. like, the hurt or the bitterness. You know? I think Um, maybe at this point. I have forgiven him because it's like, it's been freaking nine years. (laughs) It's been nine years. Like I have not forgotten. It still hurts when I think about it because some of those people I had considered like on the way to being good friendships. Now they're all like, I've repaired a few of them. Some of them is just like a very like you do you, I do me, Right. but we're not going to be friends. But for him, maybe there's some forgiveness there, but not a forgetting. (laughs) Yeah. And so so going to my coworker who I'm struggling building trust with, Mm -hmm. um, building teaming with, um, I kind of just, like, come to the conclusion that we're going to have to find a way to work together where Mm -hmm. we're getting the work done, but there's not going to be a lot of trust there. Mm -hmm. It's definitely going to affect our relationship and it's going to cause issues and problems down the road that we're going to have to like work through, unfortunately, Um, because I don't see it improving on their part. I'm definitely trying to do my part to improve, but one-sided, not reciprocated. Mm-hmm. And um, I wanted to go back to that emotional bank because you had said something that reminded me. I think the question was like, hmm. So basically, like, you guys are building up these things. So like, 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 Leia, you, my, you're my account. It's fully high. So if you were to do something that hurt my feelings, you just deposit a little bit. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure I can talk to you and it'd be like, go back. Yeah. Um, like I, I can't imagine you doing anything that would be like such a withdrawal that mm-hmm. would like ruin our relationship. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so I think what had happened with you guys was like you guys were building, but all of a sudden they that one guy he just took out so much, mm-hmm. and there was nothing left, and you're like, I I I'm in a deficit. Yeah, I'm in an emotional deficit. Um. So, it came down to the decision of, is this person, is this someone I want to try to continue working relationship with? Mm-hmm. Or whatever. And it sounds like you chose no. Like, it sounds like you didn't look for closure or try to repair anything. Um, it was just like, wow. Like, they ghosted me. And actually, it sounds like they didn't give you, like, they didn't give you room to, like, get that closure or whatever. No. It was very much like no communication, no nothing. So they kind of made that decision for you, mm-hmm. right? Um, so those are people definitely that don't deserve to be in your lives. Yeah. Um, people, I think, depending on what happens, mm-hmm. right? And there's remorse and they're trying. Um. I think that's different. Yeah. And that should be considered differently. Yeah. Like, you should definitely take your time and decide when you're ready if that's something you want to pursue or not. But um, I think it deserves different consideration. Mm -hmm. So um, I think early on I had talked about me and my sister and how there's a divide in the family, my adopted sister. Yeah, a few episodes ago. Yeah, like yeah. Way, many episodes. Yeah, ago. <laughs> um, that that has still not been mm. resolved, right? Um, as much as I want to be resolved, and I've done things to resolve it, mm-hmm. um, I'm not sure she knows or doesn't know. Um, whatever it is, she feels like she can't trust me, and so she's pulled away mm-hmm. and pulled out. Yeah. Um, I I had just talked to my mom this week because it was my birthday like we they, we went out for a birthday and she's like i think you guys will um reconcile but it's gonna take a while yeah um especially with the situation the way because she's going through a situation right now mm-hmm. so probably when that situation's over that's probably when you guys will reconcile yeah. you know and you have like um, the mental and emotional yeah. energy too <laughs> yeah. yeah so um time Mm -hmm. time so can so i think the question was can if someone breaks your trust can you rebuild trust Mm -hmm. and i think it can but what do you need to rebuild that trust you need to be willing to listen Mm -hmm. um and my sister was not very willing to listen to me it was Mm -hmm. very much like you did this no like uh like we she wasn't willing to talk it out with me yeah um and then communicate Mm. right and so interpersonal communication is very important and what's the purpose behind personal intercommunication it is really to build trust right Mm -hmm. but we can communicate so the way i'm going to use it is is i'm going to listen to what you're saying and Mm -hmm. you're going to listen to what i'm saying yeah and then we're going to if something's like not clear we're going to repeat our understanding we're going to acknowledge, like, you said this, or is this what you were trying to say? Because that's how I understood it. Mm-hmm. And then that gives me or you a chance to correct it or be like, no, you got it. You got it, right? And then, um, so you're listening, you're acknowledging, and you're confirming. And that's the basis of interpersonal communication right there. Yeah. And if you can do that, you can build trust with someone, especially if they're following through and showing up mm-hmm. and being respectful and showing that they are caring and considerate. Exactly. But if someone's not doing that, then I'm not gonna want to spend time with them. I'm not gonna. Be, I'm not gonna be close with them. Yeah. And so, what the other part of last week's episode was like that emotional thing. Like, honestly, if I see my sister, she's probably not gonna want a hug from me, and I'm mm-hmm. not gonna want to hug her because I'm not gonna feel safe. Like, yeah there's a possibility I could get rejected and that would hurt a lot, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I also, I don't want her to feel uncomfortable or push her boundaries. So right now we can't be physical because we are missing trust on both sides. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so 
you do have to have that trust to even be physical with friends mm -hmm. or a lover or a co-worker yeah. or whatever and that ties into our platonic intimacy and that's why this is part two <laughs> why it's part two we brought it back around man we did it <laughs> so with all of that said Leia, um do you feel like you missed opportunities growing up not sitting in some girls laps at school or developing that kind of like bond where you could like touch them to touch their hair mm -hmm. or or whatever probably <laughs> probably um i just i still don't know if it was a trust thing or maybe just an maybe but maybe on some level it was i think i just i felt very uncomfortable and unsure if that was appropriate for me or not and i don't know well, maybe i just didn't trust them on like some level i wasn't realizing at the time yeah so i think that like we are multifaceted people mm -hmm. so it's seldom just one issue it probably was a multitude th of things right mm -hmm. it probably was there was a little bit of mistrust because you couldn't really like i i remember you saying they weren't very nice to you mm -hmm. when you first got to that school right yeah um secondly you grew up in a really religious restrictive <laughs> religion right yeah and so like sitting in people's laps wasn't okay right? <laughs> like that's an absolutely no like yeah you're not gonna do that because that's not what proper little christians do yeah right so like so now you're you have the the feelings part and then you have the religion aspect mm -hmm. and different things but then you see other people doing it, you're like well why can't i do that but you can't you're not maybe you're not at that time you weren't aware enough to unpack everything. yeah maybe you unpacked a few things then but yeah there's probably so many layers there probably <laughs> i'm an onion <laughs> like in shrek <laughs> but you gotta have friends <laughs> tying it all together all together um i do want to go take a break okay but something i just wanted to add um So when you want to rebuild trust with someone, that's great, you know, but you need to, I just want to remind people that you need to remember your boundaries. Yeah. Um, if someone hurts you on a deep level, physically, emotionally, mentally, you need to also set up boundaries to protect yourself. Um, and I think that's one reason why in that friendship, I refuse to try and rebuild trust or try and maintain that friendship um because he crossed a boundary with me um with some of the things he told the other people so you know that's a boundary that he pushed i'm done and so if anyone is struggling with rebuilding trust in a relationship um with someone who has pushed boundaries i think that takes a different level of yeah. thought and communication and like knowing yourself like is this relationship beneficial to you to have to forgive and forget or rebuild or whatever so i just wanted to put that out there because it kind of you know different people different situations but remember your boundaries <laughs> boundaries are a love language they mm -hmm. are a way to show you love people mm -hmm. By listening to them, acknowledging them, and following them. Yes. Alrighty, I just wanted to say that. Let's go take a break. Let's do it. Okay, Lamont. Today, we're going to finally do our Q&A. Oh, yay! <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for all the hundreds of thousands of questions that you submitted. But we'll probably only pick, like, six. You're so full of crap, dude. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so... That was a tribute to the Levant and Leia show. <laughs> we used to, like, pretend. I know. <laughs> 
Um, so I guess we're not as popular as we thought. Um, we didn't get that many questions, but it's okay. We're gonna answer the questions we got. Yes. Because we're appreciative. Yes. <laughs> but you know, anytime you guys want to know something, feel free to leave it in the comments. Send us send us a message. We may answer it right there on the spot, or we may do another Q and A in the future. Who knows? We'll see. Okay, let's go ahead and just start answering questions. <laughs> uh, the first one is, what is your favorite memory of Lamont slash Leia? So I'm guessing you answer uh, for me, I answer okay. for you, etc. Would you like to go first? I have so many. I know, right? Um, I want to say, like... Like, the one that pops into my head, like, right away is when we were doing Lamont and Leia's show, mm -hmm. and Leia did the Christmas special, and she was singing, and I thought she just looked so beautiful, and I have always loved, like, Leia's singing voice, so that was, like, definitely one of my favorite moments. <laughs> oh, hey, sweet. Um, I would say one of my favorite Lamont memories is the many, many, many times we blasted music <laughs> in the little putt putt um and just sang and danced our heart outs while driving because that's while so moving. safe <laughs> hey i was in control the entire time <laughs> it was a lot of fun it was great <laughs> <laughs> um okay next question who does what on the lamont and leia podcast Ooh, that's a very good question. Mm -hmm. Do you want to take this one, Leah? Or sure, I can talk for myself. Uh, so I'm responsible for the editing as well as any of the graphic design that you see from our logos, our Instagram posts, to a future secret project that you will see soon. <laughs> um. And I occasionally chime in with, like, topic suggestions and, like, write stuff, but that's more Lamont's strong suit. <laughs> yeah, so um, I book a lot of our guests. Um, Leia can book guests, too, but I do majority of the booking. Um, I write a lot of the scripts or the outlines, not scripts, mm -hmm. they're really yeah. outlines of questions that we're going to ask and mm -hmm. like kind of like the direction that we're going to go. I um, promote. Yeah. So I do a lot of the promotion. I go to a lot of pages. I post in groups. Um, trying to build up our numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'll make the graphics, but I'll send them to him and then yeah. he posts them. So, occasionally yeah, I'll post this too. Like Leia oh. takes care of the Instagram. I take mainly care of the Facebook page. Yeah, but I usually just copy and paste what he posted on Facebook and then put it on Instagram. <laughs> I don't do much work there. Mm -hmm. um, I also, for the most part, write the or come up with the ideas for the funny intros, which we mm -hmm. do at the beginning of the podcast. Some of them are not written. Some of them are, they just happen. But occasionally I'll be like, ooh, let's do something funny like this. And then we'll just do it. We'll do it yeah. <laughs> um, and that's actually an homage to the Lamont and Leia show, the original mm -hmm. show, because that's how a lot of our episodes will go. We're like, what are we going to do today? And like, we're going to do this, 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 and this. And then like, just do it without a script. Yeah. Um, so we kind of wanted to keep a little of the like magic, but also um, be more structured. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also handle the money. There's no money, but <laughs> if there was, I handle the money. <laughs> um, we could get more money, you guys. It like we could get more money. We could hire a team to do a lot of things that we need to get done to give you guys better quality. Um, if you guys would share our episodes with your friends yeah. and make sure you tune in each week and like our numbers go up we could we could literally make money um so if you want to support us by listening and tuning in and sharing and when you see that i um send a podcast or the podcast is on my page and you decide to share it like like oh let me share this with this person and this person you could really help us out mm -hmm. it, it would help a lot just a side note if you want to help us, like, just give us money, 
there's a link on our anchor page. You can just click it and send us money. <coughs> Straight husband Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> Okay, this next question is a little more serious, but that's okay. We can answer serious questions. Um, do you believe the word tolerant has lost its original meaning? So um, what is the original meaning of tolerant? Yeah, so I just typed it on Google. Look. Yeah, I typed it on Google. Um, tolerant, defined by Oxford, uh, says willingness showing willingness to allow the existence of opinions or behavior that one does not necessarily agree with um eh, see the thing is <laughs> i feel this question comes from like i don't know the person who sent this maybe you do i don't I didn't. i'm, I'm I... not gonna put their name out there because okay. i want to keep all this you know whatever um I think that a lot of people view people as intolerant nowadays because there's a lot more of calling people out for bullshit. I'm just going to be straight up. Because, like, a lot of people our age are tired of people being judged for being who they are. Um, and this can be skin color orientation career um i know i personally am tired of it and i am right. not really afraid to be like no that's not that's not something you say right. and i've heard the argument told back to me like oh well you're just being politically correct and you care too much and like for me personally i think it's more tolerant to call people out on stuff like that like if someone is saying um oh well i don't think this religion is valid because it's not my religion i'm gonna call them out on it and be like no they're just as valid in their beliefs they're allowed mm -hmm. to believe what they believe and that just goes across the board yeah, um, that's what america was about founded yeah for. So I think the whole whole thing of people saying, well, it's you're no one's tolerant anymore because you aren't allowing people to believe stuff. And like, no, you can believe what you want. I'm just going to tell you when you're being an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Step so, off my so, soapbox. <laughs> okay. So has tolerance lost its original meaning? I, I want to say no. Um, from what I read, it means to endure fortitude so there's a lot of things that people do tolerate should we tolerate racism no we shouldn't should we tolerate sexism no we shouldn't should we tolerate anyone degrading any person for any reason no we shouldn't like that stuff should not be tolerated and so for us to stand up and be assertive or take action um maybe there might be a sense of us losing tolerance, but um, it really shouldn't be tolerated. Yeah. Um, what what things should be tolerated, Leah? Like, what do you think? Um, I think if someone... Okay. So, we have... What's been in the news? I really feel like religion's been in the news a lot lately. Um, and while I may not agree with, I don't want to put anyone on, like, I don't want to put anyone on blast, but I feel like the biggest issue recently has been Muslim versus Christian. Okay. Like, I'm not Muslim. I yeah. don't believe in Muslim beliefs. I mean, maybe I agree with a few, but like, I'm not yeah. going to say, oh, like, yeah, I'm a Muslim because I'm not. But I think it is tolerant to be like, you do you, boo. Like, you want to wear your hijab, wear your hijab. Yeah. That don't mean nothing to me. <laughs> whether it be as a sign of religion compliance, whether it be for safety in the mm -hmm. culture, whether it be because you just like it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think that a lot of people are seeing me being okay with Muslim as not being tolerant of Christianity. And I'm like, no, 
you do you go to church on your Sunday, go to church on your Saturday, like go to church on your Wednesday night prayer meeting. Like that's fine. (laughs) So Um, really what's happening is the problem of scarcity and people feeling like there's not enough. So if I'm tolerant of Muslim culture, then I'm not tolerant of Christian culture. Yeah. There's there like on this lay is infinite. Like, there, she's there is no such scarcity. She's tolerant of both. Just because she's yeah, you're tolerant of both. You appreciate Christian culture, some of some of their ideas. You appreciate Muslim culture, some of their ideas. You feel like both have equal standing, and both should be able to do what they want to do when they want to do it. Believe what they want to believe. There's enough for everyone. It's infinite. There's enough for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I just, I do think it is quite funny that people think being tolerant of one thing means you are anti the op, uh, the opposition. Yeah. Um, I think you also see this a lot in the um, argument of pro-life, pro-choice. Yes, I was thinking the same thing. Too bad we're not playing that game right now. <laughs> because even though pro-life exists and you're tolerant that it exists, even if you're pro-choice doesn't mean like you know what i mean it's yeah. not whatever <laughs> so, like let's just say like let's be honest or let, uh, let i'll be honest with me like i am pro-life mm-hmm. but i also believe in pro-choice as an yeah. equal measure mm-hmm. so if it if i was in that situation and i had control and all the power i would definitely be pro-life but i don't degrade or think poorly of someone who's pro-choice yeah i think both can exist i mean good and evil exist black and white exist monochrome rainbow exist you know like oppositions exist and i think tolerance is being okay with both of them regardless of which side you stand quote end quote on so Has tolerance lost this meaning? I think no. I think people are just being more um, vocal about it. That was a long All question. Right. <laughs> yeah, that was a very good conversation. I know. Mini one? episode within an episode. Who knew? All right. <laughs> um, okay, so moving on to something a little bit lighter. Um... <laughs> Will Lamont ever find love? (laughs) I don't know. It's not looking hopeful, people. Or if I find love, it's probably not going to be traditional love. So, I don't know. We'll see. I I think there's someone. Remain to be seen. I think yes. Love has no age or monetary or career or whatever restrictions like there's no restrictions on it so well i have i've loved a lot of people yeah and plus lamont's so full of love yeah and i love someone right now it's just that's complicated (laughs) and it's gonna remain complicated just because of the way the circumstances are and yeah so will lamont find love tune in next time (laughs) (laughs) okay Let's see. Moving on to the next question. Um, This was a comment from a friend that I'm going to pose as a question. Uh, They pretty much want to know if we are going to go live and if they can call in if we do. Um, Eventually. But not next week. I'm glad because when we first started, it was like, no, absolutely (laughs) not. I will not surrender control. (laughs) I think you're bad at (laughs) But that's pretty much what what happened. Um, I'm okay with going live, but I don't think it will ever be a constant thing. Like, um, remember our friends Ashley from how many episodes ago? So many episodes ago. Yeah. (laughs) Um, They go live every week. Yeah, every week. And so their stuff is all unedited, off script, like whatever happens, go with the flow. That's a little too much for me. 
<laughs> That's too much pressure. <laughs> but um, we are teasing, or yeah, teasing the thought of maybe doing one soonish. We'll see. But um, yeah. So maybe. Yeah. But you can you can always be a guest star, especially if there's a topic that you're mm-hmm. interested in, like talking with myself or Leia about. Um, you can always suggest a topic if you don't want to like actually talk on it yourself. Um, there's lots of ways to be involved. Um, watch watch an episode and comment. You know, um, we love that because we know that our work is being seen or heard or both. You know, mm-hmm. so. All right, and the last question is, what will they do next? Those crazy oh, kids. <laughs> so many, so many things are coming. Yes. Like Leia said, there's a secret project coming. Yes. Um, hold on, I'm just going to look at our list and kind of pick a few and tease okay. them. Um, so let's see. One of the things we want to touch on, and this isn't any in any specific order, because some of these are kind of like un- like scheduled scheduled right now um so one of them is talking about personality traits myers-briggs um another one is about conformity another is about body image body positivity all about the body physically i'm all about that base about that (laughs) Um, and one that's coming pretty soon, sorry, I'm going to break this here, is we're going to be talking about Latinx culture. Ooh, that's going to be an exciting episode, so that is definitely tune in. Yes. So, um, what will they do next? Everything! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Activity over. <laughs> Thank you for asking questions. Again, leave some more. Yes. <laughs> so we can answer them again. Okay, thanks. <laughs> so, Leia, are you ready to wrap up this topic? Yes, let's wrap up. All right. Is there anything else you want to say or any thought that we probably didn't cover or that you didn't think about or wanted to say but didn't know how to like put it in there? Yes. So I we talked about trust, what it is, how to what happens if you break it, things that can break it, how to rebuild it if needed. Um, But the, so, and that's very kind of like on a, you looking at someone to Mm. have a relationship with. I think we also need to talk about like you as a person, how can you be trustworthy so that someone else who's looking at you to like seek a relationship, whether it be interpersonal, friendship, romantic, coworker, whatever. Um, you know, there's things you got to do too. It's not just all on them. Right, right. You got to be trustworthy. Yeah, yeah. Worthy of trust. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I guess I can give some personal examples. Mm-hmm. So, um, my adoptive parents, they have let me borrow a lot of money for them. But anytime I borrow money with them from them, I have a plan like to pay them back and it is not gonna it's not gonna take forever it's usually within like two weeks or 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 more like or 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 less right and if for some reason something happens where i can't i just recommunicate like hey mom this fell through um but i like i'm making sure like you have this by this time if that's okay with you if not like i will pay you back and i'll figure it out you know and like usually she's cool and she's like and like this doesn't happen often, first of all. So, <laughs> but um, but usually she'll be like, oh, okay, cool. Um, don't worry about it. I I can trust you, right? We built that trust where I've consistently kept my word, and did that, right? Um, when they asked me to show up to important things, like my brother, like he was having a hard time with some things, and it was like, I will talk to Lamont, like if you get Lamont. I made a plan to show up and be there for them, to support them through that, you know? Um, so are you showing up for the people? Like, so I, I, I practice being trustworthy. I'm showing up. I'm keeping my word. I'm um, building important relationships to me. Um, and it's important that I have 
those aspects of trust. So um, that's just kind of personal, like on a personal level. Mm-hmm. Um, I also think part of being trustworthy is being honest, um, whether that's telling someone that you're not feeling comfortable with whatever the situation is. But also, like I said before, um, letting people know your expectations. Yeah. Um, because, you know, if someone does something and you didn't, like, tell them that you expected option A and they did option B and then you're upset – that's kind of going to break your trust with them because they're going to be like, okay, well, this person didn't tell me what they wanted. They just expected this out of me, and now they have a bad attitude. Like, I don't know. Right. I don't feel safe with them. Right. So, um, yeah. be honest. And I thought it was a little complicated, right? Because, like, on one point, like, all right, so you didn't communicate the expectation. That's your bad, right? Mm-hmm. But something did happen, and you had those feelings, and you're responding to those feelings. So I feel like you're justified in that, too. But, and, not but, and, it's complicated because you did not communicate. So, you like, you have to take responsibility, like, on your own. Like, you know, I didn't, re- I didn't communicate this, and it did affect me this way, and I'm sorry I didn't communicate this before. And if your goal is... To do better next time, do better next time. But um, I think it, I, that, that can be a little bit complicated. Yeah. But I think it's okay to, like, feel your feelings about something. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm upset. But realistically, who is the one at fault? <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's, be, be yeah. willing to take your – be willing to see how you played a role mm-hmm. in that coming about. I think that's part of being trustworthy. And um, – And claiming it. Mm-hmm. And I think kind of going into what you said about keeping your word, if you are telling someone that you are a safe space for them, be a safe space for them. Right. So, like, if you are – trying to think of an example. So, a few weeks ago, we had Sharice on here, and I had shared that a friend had come to me, and they told me they were using cocaine. hmm And I remained a safe space for them – a trustworthy person for them by showing concern for them. Mm-hmm. I didn't come off judgmental, but like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. You're being stupid. Like, did you even do the research? Like, what are you thinking? Like, it wasn't like that. It was like, are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. I was like, okay, great. What have you noticed? You know, like mm-hmm. very like non-judgmental, like way of being so he felt safe and and he and he knew that i still loved him Mm -hmm. i think to add on to that it also like so for that example if you were to be like yes i'm a safe space for you yes i support you etc etc but then you were to turn around and like make a big post on facebook like oh my god i hate drugs they're terrible and people who do them are the worst Mm. That, that you know, that would break your trust, cause, his trust, because it'd just be kind of like, okay, well, how come you're being nice to me if you think all drug users are terrible people? Yeah. Granted, you know, Lamont doesn't support drugs, but that's not to say that he thinks every single person is a terrible person for, you know, so you got to be, you got to remain a safe space can't just kind of like wishy-washy well for you no <laughs> yeah yeah wait <laughs> did you see that post where i was like life is all about drugs or something like i think i posted it and so like what i was referring to is like i had like a really good three days but like it was just a natural high mm-hmm. and so i'm like oh my god like, i was like that serotonin is working like i'm just <laughs> I'm here and stuff and i'm like and then i hear the realization like life is all about drugs i just prefer to get my natural <laughs> <laughs> you know but like really like life is all about drugs <laughs> i'm not saying take drugs i'm just saying you a lot of our, our life <laughs> responds around like drugs natural or not <laughs> Um, all right but yeah so in order to have trust with other people build trust with other people you need to be a trustworthy person too it's not one-sided it's a two-way street ding there we go that's my wrap up for the day all right (laughs) 
Um, yeah. I guess we'll see you guys next week. Thank you for watching or listening. Or listening. Bye. Bye. <laughs>